Welcome everybody to today's video where we'll be heading out to the east coast of the UK for some good old fashioned landscape photography. I'll be taking you along with me to capture these images from start to finish. We'll start out in the wind and rain and then we'll be heading back to the nice warm office where I can talk you through my editing process and all of the creative decisions that I made out in the field. I'm joined by my good friend Alex who is also a photographer and always up for a road trip. We're starting the morning with a strong coffee in the comfort and shelter of the van before heading out into the howling winds and freezing temperatures. So stick around to see how things progress and let's get straight into it. This shipwreck is the main reason we chose this beach. We were blessed with a beautiful pastel coloured sky, so I opted for a portrait shot with the intention of getting the entire ship in frame whilst being able to include a good amount of sky. I really wanted to shoot a long exposure of this scene, but with the increasing wind and the rain just starting to fall, it simply wasn't an option. Still, I thought it was a nice composition, so I framed it all up, manually focused on the ship, set a two second timer and waited for a gap between gusts of wind before taking my shot. All right, welcome to the office. Um, before I get stuck into editing this picture, I just want to say thank you so much for the support that I've had um, on the last video. Um, I'm just over a thousand subscribers now, which I know isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but um, I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Uh, and I've had some amazing comments, some really supportive comments. Uh, and it's just great to hear that people are finding a bit of value in the videos, uh, as well as finding them entertaining. And I just, this is the reason I do it, you know, so um, thank you so much for, for watching, for commenting, liking, subscribing and all of that stuff. And um, uh, yeah, it really gives me the drive to kind of carry on making these videos and, and doing this. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. So let's get straight into this image. So opening this image in Lightroom, the very, very first thing that I need to address um, is these corners. Um, basically what's happened is my leaf filter system I've just stacked too many things on the front of it uh, and it's just reaching out too far in front of the lens and it, you're starting to see that in the uh, in the image. Um, it's not so much of a problem, I can crop through it, um, but it's something I need to fix in the future. Um, so I'll be sure to do that before I next head out because uh, I find it really annoying. <laughs> uh, and then the second thing as well, um, these dirt spots, I'd love to tell you that it's because it was raining, but actually it's just because it's, uh, it's dirty, my sense is dirty, and I need to clean it. But uh, these are all things that can be, be fixed um, in post, fortunately. Right, so the first thing that I like to do with any image is just scroll down through this develop list um, and just enable profile corrections. Uh, that gets rid of any kind of barrel distortion and any extra vignetting that you might not want. And often I'll um, remove chromatic aberration for this image. It's not really something that you're gonna have to deal with. And then I open the crop tool. Um, the crop tool for me is the single most important feature um, in Lightroom. You can be the best color grader and retoucher in the world, but if you're not making good images with good compositions, then it kind of doesn't matter. So um, yeah, I spend a lot of time in the crop module, um, just trying to get everything exactly how I want it to look. Uh, obviously you get as close as you can in camera. I generally tend to zoom out a little bit further um, than I intend to when I am taking images, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room in Lightroom. So the first thing to do is straighten out the horizon line. Um, I try and get it as straight as I can in camera, but sometimes it's not always perfect. So I just like to do this by eye and that looks about right to me. We weren't far off. And then we crop. Um, I tend to, with my portrait shots, go for a four by three um, composition. I find that five by seven just gives you a bit too much sky. I mean, it depends on the image. It depends what you've got in your frame. And it also depends how much of the sky you want to include. You might have like a burning sunrise and that's the key feature in your image. And therefore you would go for a taller, a taller composition um, to get more of that sky in. But for this, I'm gonna go for a four by three. 
and then I'm just going to pull it down a little bit from the top because I don't want too much sky in there. I want the ship to be the kind of key feature of this image. And also I need to get rid of the uh, <laughs> the black the black vignetting around the corner. So I'm just making sure that I've kind of cleared that out. That looks pretty good to me. I might just move it over a touch. I'm looking at the kind of more prominent area of the ship and making sure that's hitting that uh, that intersecting third on the bottom left which it is now, and I think that looks pretty good. So the first thing to, <laughs> that we need to do now, and now that we've decided on our crop, is sort this guy out, the uh, the dirt spots. I don't know if you can see right now, but they, um, they're they terrible. So to address that, we'll open the, uh, the kind of spot healing tool. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, I've got visualized spots turned on. That's something you can toggle on and off. And you can see now uh, just how bad these dirt spots are. Fortunately, it's a quick fix. You just uh, you just select heal, and then just go around with your brush and uh, just click on them all to uh, kind of mask them out and hide them. <laughs> so now that we've done that, I like to look at the sky uh, kind of separately to the rest of the image, uh, and I'd like to edit that first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our masking and we're going to select the sky. Simple as that. Um, usually when you've got quite a strong horizon line, it does a really good job of kind of separating the two. Um, you can also do it manually. I'm going to pull the exposure down a touch. I'm going to pull the highlights down a smidge. Something like that. And then I'm going to just um, add a touch of dehaze just to bring a little bit more detail back into the sky. Um, it was quite vibrant. It was quite kind of pastel and it had this kind of purpley hue. So I'm gonna try and bring that back a little bit. I think that looks about right. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna bring that exposure back up just a touch now that I've made those other changes. That looks about right to me. Everything that I do in Lightroom, I try and be as subtle as I possibly can. Uh, you can go too far with these sliders and things can get a little bit out of control. So the idea is just to bring things back to how they looked when you were out in the field, when you was capturing it, when you was out in those conditions, just trying to bring those details back into the raw image. So now moving down to the, the second half of the image, um, it all looks a little bit muddy, a little bit dark, a little bit kind of flat. So the very, very first thing we're gonna do is uh, pull some shadows out of the image, something like that. And then looking at the whites and the blacks, I'm just gonna use these to add a little bit more contrast to the, to the image as a whole. Uh, I'll often add a bit of clarity, but because of the nature of this image with the ship being so kind of old and gnarly and textured, I think you're gonna to go too far with that very quickly. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna to touch that. It's something I can add a little bit more of later down the line if I feel like uh, it's just missing a bit of punch. I'm gonna leave everything else alone. I think it's um, saturated quite nicely. Um, and I'm gonna move down to sharpening. Um, sharpening's a weird one for me. It kind of depends on the image. Um, if I'm shooting like a woodland scene in the mist, I won't touch it. Sometimes I'll even back off the sharpening slider a little bit just to try and keep that soft look. But uh, for something like this, I really want to emphasize just how, how sharp the edges were of this old ship and how weathered it was. So I'll be pushing the sharpening up um, probably to about 80, something like that. Um, and then I'll be masking it. Uh, so I'll hold down the option key and move this masking slider along just so that it's affecting the kind of integral parts of the image and, and nothing else. You don't need to sharpen the sky. You just need to sharpen those bits that you want to draw attention to. So something like that. And that's pretty much it for these uh, kind of global adjustments. Um, I always put a vignette on my images, uh, but I don't do it here. I do it manually, which is the thing that I'm going to do next. Uh, you'll notice as well, I haven't touched the contrast slider. Again, that's something I like to do manually with uh, with brushes and masking. So we'll jump into that now. So moving on to the vignette effect, I do this generally with uh, linear linear masks. So I'll, uh, I'll just kind of drag them up. I like to drag them out quite far and then back them off so it's quite a soft effect and I'll uh, just pull the exposure down a touch and I do this for all four corners um, I do it this way so I've got more control over where the uh, the vignette lies 
So on this um, top left hand corner, um, I'll be making this one a little bit darker than the others. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you look at the composition before I add that, uh, you'll notice we've got the cliffs on the right hand side and not a lot going off on the left hand side. Um, and it just makes the whole thing feel a little bit unbalanced. So by darkening down that left hand side, a little bit more it kind of restores a bit of order and um, just puts the just tips the scales back to center a little bit so I'll be darkening that side down something like that uh, and then I'll just put a very very minor one on this top right hand corner just to kind of complete the uh, the vignette effect Okay, so I'm happy with the vignette effect, but the ship now feels a little bit dark um, and I really want to give a bit more attention to that. It's the uh, kind of integral part of the frame. So I'll put a radio filter over it and you'll notice I'm just making sure that I'm not affecting the sky here. I'm just trying to bring that down so that it's affecting the ship and a little bit of the surroundings, uh, but not touching that sky. And I'll just bring the exposure up a touch. I don't want to go too far with it. Very, very subtle. Something like that, just to bring a bit more attention to the ship. And I'll just pull a few highlights down in that area as well. So here's how we started things off. And you can see how much of a difference we've made as we transition to the final image. I used a brush tool to paint in a bit of contrast and got rid of the footprints on the sand using a content aware removal tool in Photoshop. This shot's not going to win any awards, but it's a nice reminder of a morning spent out with my camera and a good friend of mine, and for that alone, it's worth keeping. With all that done, let's get back out to the coast, where the sun's getting low, the clouds are starting to catch the golden light, and things are shaping up nicely for a sunset image. Thank you. 